Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. But if you need a bigger break, you'll need a bigger Kit Kat. And here's how you make one. Melt it in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In a meanwhile, grab a piece of cardboard and cut the word Kit Kat. Write the letters in foil and lay them backwards on the bottom of the mold. Now you can pour in the chocolate. And while we wait for the first layer to harden, let's do the filling. We'll need 9 pounds of butter. Cut it in less sizable chunks and pour in 9 pounds of boiled condensed milk. This time your everyday mixer won't cut it, so grab a screw gun instead. Now, layer waffles on top of hardened chocolate. Do three layers of three waffles. But remember to leave some space about an inch wide between waffles and the walls of your mold. Cover each layer with some filling, and when you've done all three of them, fill in the mold with melted chocolate. Repeat this whole process four times. Now, make a rectangular wooden frame around 33 by 30 inches. Cover the frame with some baking paper so that the chocolate won't stick to the surface. Carefully empty the molds and fill in the space between the bars with some melted chocolate to bind them together. You can remove the frame after the chocolate hardens. In order to have all the bars of the same chocolate tint, let's cover them with more chocolate. Fill your airbrush with melted chocolate, but don't heat it over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now paint over the spots, where the chocolate has changed its color. Our giant is finally complete. Let's grab a piece. This is some 110 pounds Kit Kat. KFC is all about chicken, so we'll need meat, a lot of meat. We're going big, so let's use turkey meat instead. Cut turkey filet into even slices. For the marinade, squeeze two oranges. Add an ounce of salt, pour in two and a half ounces of soy sauce, and stir till the salt dissolves. And here's the secret of juicy meat. Use a syringe to inject marinade into the meat. This way, the turkey will retain its juiciness after cooking. Now do the same trick with 12 pounds of turkey legs and wings. Bake the meat on both sides at 480 degrees using a fan oven for 30 minutes each. For the breading, we mix 3 pounds of corn and wheat flour each. Smoked paprika and ground cayenne pepper. Coat the turkey in the breading and then dip it in water. Do it once again. There's no such thing as too much meat. Move on to frying. Do it in a deep pan, where you can fit in 14 pounds of vegetable oil. When the turkey is golden brown, start cooking sweet chili sauce. First off, take canned peeled tomatoes. Then peel two apples and squeeze juice from one orange. Chop three quarters of an ounce of chili pepper and process it in a blender along with apples. Add 
add three quarters of an ounce of salt to it, one and three quarter ounces of soy sauce, one ounce of honey, a quarter ounce of paprika, canned tomatoes, and a quarter ounce of dried tomatoes. Once it's all processed, bring it to a boil. Add fresh apple juice and sugar. Cook for around 20 minutes. This will enhance the flavors. Once you're done doing that, you'll have 30 pounds of pure homemade meaty happiness. Yum! Living a dream. Are you still in a mood for some snacks? Because maxi chips are next up, and they're not just your regular potato chips, these are Pringles. In order to make them, we boil clean, unpeeled potatoes. For a large serving that we decided to cook, we'll need 13 pounds. Don't forget to add 10 eggs. We'll be using a brand new construction mixer to mix it well. There's nothing like construction tools to help you cook big dishes. Now mix in three pounds of flour. Add half a cup of salt, paprika, vegetable oil, and turmeric. Vegetable oil will make the dough more flexible and less sticky. Now cut a ball from the dough, so it's about 7 ounces. Knead it with your hands to get rid of air bubbles. Grate cheese right into the dough and knead it again. This way you can feel the cheese flavor in each crunchy chip. Once you rolled out the dough, cut out an oval. Heat some oil in a pan and before you deep fry the chip, fry the chips on both sides. Six ounces sounds like a child's play, but a pack that weighs nine pounds is a challenge for the bravest. And of course, the friendliest, because no man alone can eat this much chips without friends. And now, for the cheese lovers amongst you, we have a huge surprise, a giant Cheez-It. We'll need a variety of different hard cheeses, about two and a half pounds in total weight. We'll also need seven ounces of salt, seven ounces of cheese spices, three and a half ounces of olive oil, 16 cups of flour, 20 eggs, and some nine pounds of butter. Let's start by mixing salt and spices with flour, then mix in softened butter. All of this butter will make our crackers soft but crunchy. Then you can mix the eggs in. After you've managed to make the texture uniform, you can start adding cheese. Now start mixing it in. 
you have to give it all you've got because this won't be so easy. You won't be able to roll the dough out immediately, so cover it tightly with some stretch wrap and put it in a fridge for an hour. This will help with rolling the dough. Now you can cut the dough into smaller pieces, lay the pieces on a sheet of cooking paper, and join them together with your hands and a rolling pin. The dough is soft, so you should have no problems doing that. Trim the sides to make them straight. Now, cut the sheet into equal-sized squares. Make a hole in the middle of each of the squares. Then make five cuts into each side of the square. We'll cover the crackers with olive oil mixed with cheese spices. Sprinkle some salt on top and bake the squares in the oven one by one for 30 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit each. Serve them in a suitable package. And how about some sunny nachos? If you're up for the task, grab two cups of wheat flour, two cups of corn flour, three tablespoons of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of curry powder, three tablespoons of ground paprika, one tablespoon of salt, two ounces of olive oil, and one and a half cups of water. mix everything together. It's important to not leave any lumps and to thoroughly mix in the salt and spices. Now form a round shape. Sprinkle some flour on a table and roll the dough out in a rectangle. Cut out pieces in a shape of triangular nachos. Deep fry each of them for three minutes on both sides. Remove excess oil with a paper towel. And now for the sauce, grab canned tomatoes. finely sliced onion, and a few cloves of garlic. Fry them until golden brown. cayenne pepper and curry, then tomatoes. And cook everything for 30 minutes. You have to be here to feel the aroma. To make five giant pieces of cereal, do the following. Melt two pounds of butter in a cooking pot. Add five cups of milk and 10 ounces of powdered sugar. Bring to a boil. Great! Now add four pounds of corn flour and mix everything together. Let it chill a little and crack 30 eggs in. Now split the dough into five equal pieces. 
five bulls of the same size will help tremendously. Use food coloring to color the dough. Put it in a pastry bag and make giant circles on a baking paper. Bake them for 40 minutes each at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Our giant rainbow treats wish to join their tiny counterparts in milk bathing. There's nothing like some chewing gum after a filling meal. Let's make a year-long supply. Wish to join us? Let's grab 15 eggs and split the yolks from whites. Start slowly adding 14 ounces of sugar while whisking. You want the sugar to dissolve completely. Then add 14 ounces of malty fruit juice and 3.5 and ounces of gelatin. In a meanwhile, let's do the syrup. Mix 3.5 ounces of glucose syrup, 10.5 ounces of sugar, and water. Boil for 3 minutes. And while it does, microwave the juice gelatin mix so it dissolves completely. Now, start slowly adding warm syrup to egg whites while whisking. Then add the gelatin. Whisk for five more minutes. Add yellow and some red food colorings. Mix and add some orange zest. This will add pleasant citrus aroma. Mix a little more. Let's form a chewing gum. Make a rectangle with some aluminum foil and don't forget to rim the sides. Now cover the bottom with baking paper and pour out the mixture. Cover it with some cornstarch so it doesn't stick. Cut it lengthwise and roll it in. We'll use giant flower pots as packaging. Make a hole in the side of each half and glue them together. This is how you make giant chewing gum with natural ingredients. We bet each time you open a pack of M&Ms, you wish it would last much longer than it usually does. Let's make this wish come true. Let's begin by melting 14 ounces of white glaze in a microwave. Add green food coloring and mix. Spread the glaze on the walls and bottom of two equal bowls, six cups of water in volume each. Keep the thickness uniform. After you've done that, 
Melt more glaze and make a second layer. And while the outer shell is hardening, let's do the filling. Bring four cups of cream close to a boil. Melt in three and a third pounds of milk chocolate. Then add one pound of butter. Boil for a couple of minutes, then let it chill a bit and put it in a fridge for a half of an hour. Let's make some caramel for the core of our candy. Heat up four tablespoons of water and one cup of sugar. Mix and cook until the sugar becomes golden caramel in color. Then mix in 10 ounces of roasted peanuts. Now, cover two bowls with plastic wrap to prevent caramel from sticking to the bowls. Be careful, it's super hot. Put the filling in a bag and assemble the candy. Fill the glaze halves with chocolate filling. Put caramel peanuts in the middle. Now join two halves together with some chocolate filling. Hide the seams with glaze of the same color. And there you go, we finally did it! What if we could cook and eat as much food as we wanted, without any limits? Let's try it! Spaghetti with meatballs is the most favorite Italian-American dish of a lot of countries. To cook a maxi serving of it at home, we will need 10 pounds of flour, 50 eggs, 500% of desire and a professional mixer. You won't be able to cope with this serving if you don't have a special gadget. Mix the ingredients, then brace up and knead the dough. This process is pretty hard, but big dishes require a lot of efforts. Cut the dough into three pieces and cover it with plastic wrap. Let it sit. Then pick out the first lucky guy and roll out the dough for the spaghetti. The sheet of dough has to be thin enough and rectangular. Cut it into strips so they are approximately of the same width. Sprinkle with flour on top so the dough doesn't stick, and make curls out of the remaining pieces. Smile and move the spaghetti into boiling salted water. Cook it for 10 minutes. It's so nice to know that your dream is coming true very soon. After cooking homemade spaghetti, we're moving on to giant meatballs. Crack 20 eggs into 16 pounds of ground pork and beef. 
add salt and pepper to taste. If you like spicy pasta like our chef, don't be stingy with pepper. Mix it and shape five giant meatballs. Make the size as big as you always wanted to fill you up enough. Wow, now those are some meatballs, heavy. Bake them for an hour at 340 degrees Fahrenheit. In the end, decorate your cooking masterpiece with tomato sauce and fresh herbs. Poke the meatballs onto a fork of a fitting size and enjoy! It tastes divine with spaghetti! Giant sushi rolls are just what I need. It won't be easy to cook, but it's gonna be so yummy! First things first, fillet a 10-pound salmon. This is not for the faint of heart because right now our chefs are trying to clean the fish as good as possible. Someone can lose their head after seeing this. The flesh is so red and juicy. That's a true gourmet food. You just have to get rid of unnecessary details. However, we can use the tail as a fan, but not for long because the fish smell didn't go anywhere. Awesome, our fish will be done after a few final touches. Separate the skin and cut in half to get four pieces. This way the fish will soak in sugar and salt better. and refrigerate the fish for 10 hours. While it's marinating, we have to cook 20 pounds of rice. When it's done, get to assembling. Take a bamboo mat. Well, anyone hasn't been using it for a long time. That's fine, hurry up and coat the mat with a thin layer of Philadelphia cream cheese. Evenly spread it out. You have eight pounds of cheese, but you're not using all of it will still need it. Now put on nori and carefully coat them with water one after another. It would be great to overlap them. This way there won't be any gaps and the filling won't fall out. Hmm, we're moving on to it right now. Don't be stingy with rice, we have a lot of it. Just leave a little piece of nori without it. Don't ask me why, it's supposed to be this way. Now put on cream cheese. These sizes are so satisfying. And here comes the fish. Faster, faster, we can't wait to taste it. Wow, so did you hide cucumbers in there too? I see you can be hard, chefs. What, you don't like stems? You cope with every cucumber so fast. Now comes the most interesting part. We make a roll. It turned out so big, like a whale. We need heavy artillery to cut it. Luckily, we have it. Chef, you're cutting it so nice. I don't know how you're holding yourself back from having a bite. 
Moreover, soy sauce is already here. You can't eat sushi without it. Wasabi, ginger, awesome. All the traditions of this dish are followed. Put it on a plate, sprinkle with sesame seeds, and enjoy these piles of sushi rolls.